I believe life is beautiful. How about you? Life may be tough and sweet, may be filled with moments of boredom or extreme excitement. There are certain aspects of it which are common to everyone, yet is unique and personal to each one of us. We all know that life is not a fairy tale, but we can make life the best tale that we want if we choose so. This talk is for the grandchildren of my three and five year old daughters to show them that life is worth exploring. And to explore it, you need to have dreams, the courage of following those dreams, and resilience to face the challenges that life may offer you. And today, if you let me, I'd like to share this talk with you. My story starts in a small town in the southern part of Sicily, in the middle of the Mediterranean. A beautiful, somehow isolated town, surrounded by gorgeous hills and green pastures filled with cows. Many cows. Many, many cows. Idyllic, you may say, but think a moment how it is for a kid to play on those green pastures just right after the cows have left. <laughs> Let's say that was some sort of dirty business. Like many kids, I had a relative who has strong influence in my life. And like many of us, I was always passionate about something. A something that I didn't know what, why was there in the first place, or even where it came from. For me, the special relative was my maternal grandfather, my nonno. And the something I was passionate about was space. My grandparents have this beautiful house on the countryside, where our family used to spend summer vacations every summer when I was a kid. And I remember that during those long summer days, my grandfather would take the time to tell stories of his youth to me and my brother, including the five years he spent during World War II as a conscript soldier and then a prisoner of war in a Nazi camp. I remember the struggles and sufferings that he had to endure during those years, and the resilience and grit it took him and his friends to make it home, alive and safe. All those stories inspire me to serve my country. I too wanted to serve a greater good, and I start dreaming of becoming a general. And then, at night, every night, I would look at the pitch black sky, and I would see the Milky Way in all its mighty beauty. I was fascinated by space and wondered what was out there. I was old enough to know the man had already walked on the moon, and I start dreaming of going out to space myself. But I wanted to do with style. I want to command my Starship Enterprise. You see, like many kids from small town, I too had big dreams. And those big dreams, those childhood dreams, cherish them. They are special. Some of them may actually become true. I haven't given up yet to command my Starship Enterprise. Others may just bring fond memories of a special time but never, never disregard or forget them. So growing up, I held onto those two dreams. I remember once as a teenager, I was reading a magazine, and I found an image of an astronaut performing a spacewalk, a very special spacewalk. The astronaut was wearing a jet-powered backpack, and he was floating, untethered, in space. I tore that page out, I stuck to the wall close to my bed, so it would be the first things I would see in the morning, after opening my, house, my eyes, and the last things I would see at night before closing my eyes and falling asleep. Then, the last year of high school, I started the application to enroll into the Italian Naval Academy to become an officer. Two months after graduation, I reported for duty, and that started a, a journey which lasted 14 years. For me, being an officer, wasn't a job, wasn't a profession, it was a call. Life in the Navy first and Marines later was tough, challenging, yet rewarding. As many young person, I was torn by doubts. I failed many times, succeeded some, and faced challenge, challenges that stretched me way beyond what I thought I was capable of. Those years were also blessed by profound friendships, some of them still going strong after 25 years and by exhilarating activities and adventures. I, for once, was king of an island, 
well, I was technically the commander of a military outpost and the island, a tiny rock in the Adriatic, but still it was an island. And sure, I felt I was the king. I sailed across the Atlantic Ocean six times, twice on a sailboat. I navigated the Suez Canal. I sailed across the Indian Ocean all the way to Indonesia and back. Jumped out of helicopter hovering tens of feet from the ground in full combat gear at night. Commanded a task force of Italian Marines in Iraq, amongst the finest soldiers I have ever met. And they even marched in the Imperial Fora in Rome, like the ancient Roman generals used to. But most importantly, those 14 years taught me one big lesson. The only impossible dream is the one that you fail to act upon. You see, I never thought for me it'd be impossible doing all those things, yet I did it. And that lesson that the only impossible dream is the one that you fail to act upon was going to have powerful repercussions. Here I was in my early 30s, a young and handsome captain, ready for a long and thriving career in the Navy. Yet, every night, when I was looking at the sky in a starry night, either in the middle of the ocean or over the desert in Iraq, I felt a burning fire inside me. That childhood dream was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. He was looking at me and saying, what else are you capable of? And I'm asking you, what would you do with a childhood dream that is getting stronger and stronger? But you are a grown-up now. You have a career. There is a path for you. Your future is even financial stable, and there is the financial crisis all over you, the year being 2008. What would you do with a childhood dream that calls for quit all of this and to embark into the unknown? Well, I follow it. You see, I believe that we all have a responsibility to take charge of our own life, and to follow our dreams, if that is what we want to do. So I quit my job, I left the Navy, I burned all the bridges, going back was no longer an option. And with no job, no retirement, only the savings accrued that far, but a lot of passions and also recently engaged to my fiancé, I decided to go to space. <laughs> and actually it was this place, the International Space University, that represented the gateway to space for me. It was here where I started after leaving the Navy as a student, full of dreams and passion. Upon the completion of an internship at NASA Ames in California, I was lucky enough to be offered a follow-on contract for 12 months. So with, at that point, my wife, I crossed the ocean, I crossed the continent, relocated to California, leaving behind families, old friends, but most importantly, leaving behind my beloved. Beautiful, fast Italian sports car, my two-seaters convertible Alfa Romeo, <laughs> that I traded for a slow, ugly, beaten up old 1996 Ford Taurus. And that, <laughs> that was tough. But you have the courage to stretch yourself, to abandon your sports car, and so you do your best. Those 12 months become 15 months, and then become 18 months, and then you have the courage to dream and to chase those dreams. What can go wrong? You're already taking the risk. You're already walking the uncommon path. You must deserve the happily ever after ending. Life is beautiful. It's mysterious. It's full of surprises. It's exciting. And many, many other things. But there is one thing that life is not. Life is not a fairy tale. Life is definitely not a fairy tale. I still remember that one night. I was the last one in the building at Ames. It was about 8 p.m., still working on a project. And I received a text. It was my wife. She was OK, a little bit tired. Being almost nine months pregnant with our first kid was taking its toll. She was also reminding me that it was about time to go back home. That night was the last one we spent together. My wife suddenly passed away in my arms the following morning. My CPR, useless. The hospital staff was able to deliver my son, but it was too late. He never recovered, and after two days, he followed his mom. 
I remember I was still in the hospital. My wife gone, my son unresponsive in intensive care, and I was walking in front of the labor and delivery unit when a man tall like me, with black hair like me, with a big reflex camera like the one I had, all dressed up in blue scrubs like I should have been, screaming with joy and happiness, it's a boy, it's a boy. When life hits you that hard unexpectedly, what do you do? You can choose to give way to self-pity, hate, jealousy, bitterness, resentment. Or you can choose to keep your mind and your heart open, to wish the Father well, to be happy for him, and to move forward. Resilience is what I choose. Resilience was the choice I made when life tested me. Resilience is what I choose to honor the one I loved and lost. You see, we all have to remember that when life hits us, we are in charge. Of course, there are events that are out of our control, but the meaning of those events and what to do with that meaning, it's up to us to decide. And we can always, always decide that. And so I did. I kept my mind and my heart open. I pushed through. And slowly but surely, life started blooming again. I put my heart and soul into my work. From an intern, I became a contractor. I started taking on more and more responsibilities. And recognition and awards start showing up. Until one day, unexpectedly, I received a medal, a NASA medal. I couldn't believe it. You know, as a military man, I used to have some medal, but receiving a medal as a civilian and from NASA, I was ecstatic. But the most beautiful thing about that medal was that I had the opportunity to share the joy and happiness with an amazing woman that I met during my healing process, who is now my wife and the mother of my two adorable daughters. Today, at NASA Ames, I help leading the Mission Design Center, where we support scientists to assess the feasibilities of their mission to explore the solar system, to the Moon, Mars, Venus, Europa, just to name a few places. And I still remember how many years ago I was laughed at when, honestly, quite naively, I replied during a job interview that my dream job was to work for NASA. And now, here I am. Remember, Never stop dreaming. Remember to have the courage to follow those dreams and also the courage to set new ones, to dream the impossible and then go and make it possible. To understand that life will offer you challenges that you may think are insurmountable. Be strong, be resilient, keep pushing and you will make it through. Happier, wiser, richer. And foremost, remember, go out and explore what you're capable of. Life is out there waiting for you. What are you waiting for? Thank you. <laughs>